praise you, Father. We just ask, Lord, that you would open the eyes and ears of our hearts, Father, for this message, Lord Jesus. Father, give us the things that you need us to have. Lord, we're so grateful again that you steer us and lead us in the ways that we should go, Father, so that we can experience everything you have for us, the fullness of what you have for us, Father. We thank you, love you, and praise you. In this precious name, we pray, in your precious name we pray, Father. Amen. So in the Greek, um, is this the right notes? Wrong. Oh, here we go. I, I do know that guy. <laughs> and he goes, I'm not going to put you through that today because we have a specific place we're going. I love this verse in the Tree of Life Bible. And, uh, and I didn't give it to Donna. But it says in the Tree of Life, and I think this is the one. No, that's not the one. No. Is that the one? Matt, pull that one up for a minute. Nope, that's not the one. That's a different one. We'll save that one for a minute. But in the Tree of Life Bible, again, I love this verse, and it says, and the Raush and the bride may say come. All right? And, and I love this as Raush means this, wind, breath, or spirit. And I touched a little bit about this on Wednesday night. Uh, in the Greek, it's the word pneumea. All right? And pneumea, um, again, we need to understand in the content of context, or the content and context of God's word that we have a positive and a negative for most of the Greek words. There's a masculine and a feminine. There's the pronouns and nouns, the, all different things that come with the Greek language. And so we need to understand the content and content of the word. Now, in this particular place where it says, and the rarush and the bride say come, excuse me, they're not talking about the Holy Spirit. All right, they're speaking about the wind and breath of God. All right, and Numia, again, we need to understand the content and context of the word. Um, and if we understand this, if the word holy is in front of the word, then it is referencing the Holy Spirit. All right, but if it's not, if it's not got the Holy Spirit in front of it, it is speaking of the breath of God. Now, Ma now Matthew 3.16, all right, where it says this, after being immersed, all right, Yeshua rose up out of the water, and behold, the heavens were open to him. And he saw, there it is, the Raush Elohama descending like a dove and coming upon him. So this was the Spirit of God coming down upon him. It wasn't the Holy Spirit. It was the breath and the wind of God. Now, in the beginning in Genesis, what, did it, what does it say? that God breathed life into Adam. All right, so the breath of God as he exhales, as a matter of fact, if you go, Ohim, you're inhaling and you're exhaling. And so what happens is, is when we inhale and we exhale, in that aspect, we are speaking in the breath of God, not the Holy Spirit. So, the Lord wants to speak and breathe his spirit upon you. Now, the Holy Spirit is something totally different. <clears throat> so, again, we see this. Jesus emerged from his baptism, and at that moment, heaven was open, and Jesus saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and, calming and coming upon him, alighting on his very body. Again, Jesus comes up. The breath of God is dispersed upon him. And what happens? Jesus understands what he's supposed to do. All right? Now, Numea, all right, comes from the root neo, and it means I blow. I blow. We saw it in Acts. When in Acts, all of a sudden, the, the wind came in, the breath of God came in, and everything changed. All right? Everything changed. And so, as we see this, when, when, when it says, whosoever may come, all right, the breath of God, which is, the God, which is God speaking, is saying, come, come, you know? Come, come understand and taste and see what I have for you. Because I have something that's going to bring you life. See, we can't force anybody 
to do anything for God. We can't. You know, it's, it's not, it's, I remember being a kid and I was being told what I had to do. And the first thing that happens being told what I have to do, not doing that. Not doing it. Don't climb the tree. I'm going to climb that tree. I'm going to go to the very top. And if it snaps, it snaps and I'll die. But I'm not going to be told I can't do it. Don't do this. See? Because that's not an invitation to come. That's a demand to do. See, as I've always said, the word of God is full of choices. We get to choose what we want to do. But we better understand the consequences of the choice. We'll get to that in a minute. So Jesus emerged from his baptism, and the Lord blew his breath. And what happened? Jesus knew what he was to do. Now, if we compare it to the word suko, now we know numia means I blow. Now, if we compare it to the word suko in the Greek, we find that it means a refreshing a refreshing. A lot of times I'll go to the word of God. And it becomes a fresh, a refreshing for me. Why? Because the word of God speaks. And what happens when we speak? We blow. We create air. And if the word of God speaks to me, it becomes a refresher. And I, oh. I mean, I can't understand. If you read the word of God and you don't come, become refreshed from that, then you're dead. You're dead. Because I know for me, the word of God refreshes me. It gets in there and just, ah, I can do this. I can walk through this. See? But at the same time, that word, suko, means a cooling down. There's the positive and the negative. It refreshes or it can cool you down. Why would the word of God cool you down? It turn you cold. Because you don't want to hear what it says. You don't want to hear what it's telling you to do. You don't want to see that if you decide to live in the word of God, again, this is the world spirit. We've been talking about that on Wednesday night. The world spirit thinks that you lose all of your freedoms and abilities. But I'll tell you what, I, I've had more freedom and abilities following the Lord than I've ever had unfollowing the Lord. And so all of a sudden, there's this cooling down. Let's go to Matthew 24, 12. Matthew 24, 12 says this, The love that they had for one another will grow cold because few will obey the law. Few will obey the word of God. We're seeing it today. Few, everybody's trying to manipulate the word of God to fit a certain agenda that they think that they should live in. As a matter of fact, we're watching, I hate to say this, Christianity do the same thing. Well, we'll just alter it and change it and do this and do that. You know, nothing irritates me more than a church I know that belongs to a religious organization and removes a religious organization and makes himself look like something they're not. What's the matter? You're not proud of being what you are? That's the story. Well, you know, it offends people if they see, you know, I'll just, and for again, for an illustration, because you see a lot of the, the Baptist church is doing this now, and I have nothing against Baptist churches, but you see them remove the affiliation to the Baptist organization. You see them becoming community churches now, and other things. I've never belonged to a religious organization. We will never belong to a religious organization. We will always be evangelical Christians. We will always be non-denominational. We belong to God. That's who we belong to. That's who we serve. That's who we allow lead us. <clears throat> I never want to give a false pretense of what we are. We are servants to the Lord. Period. End of the conversation. So again, what happens? People cool down. People cool down to this. This can be a refresher or it can be something that cools you down because you don't want to live by. And I would tell you this, today, make a choice. Because remember what the word of God says. Either be hot or be cold. 
But if you're lukewarm, I'm spewing you out of my mouth. See? God has more respect for the cold person than he does the lukewarm person that's got one foot in the pool and one foot on the, on the side of the pool. He, either or. In refreshment, we choose to walk in the will and the way of the Lord. In coolness, we choose to disembark from it and go a whole nother route. So again, false prophets will appear. Many will be taken in by them. And the only thing that will grow is wickedness. There will be no end to the increase of wickedness. I've always said this. The church under attack is doing the right thing. The church not under attack, well, Satan doesn't have to bother with them because they're no threat. That's really what it is. Because if you look at all the churches in the Old Testament or in the New Testament where, where Paul had to go, they were constantly under attack. They were constantly under attack. And so if you're following God and you're going, oh, Pastor Mark, what's going on with my life? Keep, keep on keeping on. Come to me, the Lord says. Come to me. <clears throat> now in the Hebrew is bow and bow means to come in or go into when we receive Christ he comes into us the Holy Spirit comes into us All right, so he enters in at the same time we go into the Lord it's, 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 a, it's an agreement all right, when we enter into him, he enters into us. Because, see, this is part of the thing. You, you have to make a decision to enter into him. I'm going to enter into his word. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enter into what he says I need to do in, in order that I can receive the blessings that he has for me. Now, many times we'll go, all right, Lord, I'll, I'll, I'll receive your gift, but... I'm going to continue doing what I did. I had somebody tell me that once. If I get saved, can I still continue doing what I do? I said, sure, go ahead. Have a field day. And he goes, well, you sound, you sound so snarky about it. I go, well, you know, after a while, you're going to either get sick and tired of living the way you are, or, you know, you're going to get sick and tired of living the way you are. And I said, you're going to make a choice. And you're probably going to call me up and say, oh, I, I, I really need to have an understanding of something. I said, because, see, here's what happens. When we bring him in, a light begins to shine. And the light reveals the darkest corners of our life. Nothing irritates us more when people can see the dark things in our life and the light is shining on them because that's what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit is the beacon of light that is, lives within us when we receive Christ. And when we receive Christ, every dark space is lit up like a Christmas tree. And the funny thing is, is the word of God says, your sin will seek you out. So if you think you can hide anything, no, your sin will seek you out. And what happens in that? Well, see, here's the cool thing. And people get really irritated by this, is... The Lord uses people to come up because he loves you so much. And they say, you really need to repent of this and get right and walk in the life and light of Christ. Now, I'm going to tell you something. You might lose some friends over that because nobody wants to hear what they have to do. But Jesus says, come to me. Come to me. Whosoever may come. If I'm walking up to you and saying, hey, this is what's holding you back from experiencing the full blessing of God, I'm not doing it to be, I can't use the word because it's not a good word, but I, I'm not doing it to be this. I'm doing it because I love you enough that I want you to experience everything by coming into the word of God. See? Now, I, Again, I've had experience in this, and I, I've gone up to people and say, I'm, I'm telling you this because I love you, and they're like going, Ugh. You can almost see 
I'm turning into the werewolf a little bit. I'm telling you this because I want you to experience the fullness of God. But you know what? You got this thing, and it, it, you know, you, it's all over you. It's like you've been slimed on Nickelodeon. And it's just pouring, it's oozing off you. And I want to give you a cloth to wipe off the slime. But this thing right here is why you're not experiencing the full blessings of God. Now, he has said, come. Whosoever may come. I'm just, I'm allowing you to, whosoever may, may come. You make the choice, you make the decision. But this is what's holding you back from experiencing this amazing blessing. Because again, what, what did we find out? The Israelites knew that if Ezra read them and they followed the law, they saw the blessings. What was the law telling them? The law was telling them that they had to get right. And what would happen? They'd be blessed. So, Bo means to come in or go into. It as well means to advance and to associate and to bring to pass. Now, bring to pass means bringing up something, getting rid of it, and going on. It's time to put it in the back mirror, the rear view mirror, and it's time to get going and go this way. And you know, I, I, I remember a lot of times I would have people come up to me um, when I was just a youngster and say, oh, Mark, if you just, then God will. And I know that he has a plan for you. And I would just kind of look at him because I was a snot-nosed little kid. And, and, and I would say, yeah, well, not today. Today's not a good day. It's not on my list of things to do. See? But then as I got older, and I wasn't so stupid, and I had matured a little bit, and I began to understand God's word a little more, I went, wow. So the Lord's book says this, if I do this, if I follow him, if I lose myself and I pick up his lamp and I walk according to him, then these are going to be the things I get. Huh. It's got to be better than the things I'm possessing now, which again, trial by fire, wood, hay, and stubble. See? But the, but the word of God promises me precious stones and jewels for my crown. And again, you know what? We've said this before. Everything here on earth is going to pass away. So you can hug your bank books. You can hug your stocks. You can hug all that crap. But I'm going to tell you something. At the end of the road, poof. And when you walk into heaven and you go, And Jesus looks at it and you go, why are you smiling? Oh, well, I'm all set. And he goes, oh, you mean this stuff? Poof. Hmm. No dross. No nothing left. It's just a pile of ash. Hmm. Now, now, again, don't get me wrong. It's okay to think about a little bit into the future. But if you know who holds the future, you know that whatever happens in the future is his, see? And that's what happens. And the Lord comes. And it says the things of this world will pass away. You know, the things of this world will pass away. And that's why God's word says, whosoever may come. But remember this, those that do not come will pass away. They will not experience eternal life. These are of this world. The soul, the defined place where God lives, is not of this world. Let's keep going. So it means to come, as well as, and I love this, as well as entering, and I love this too, shedding and abiding. We enter into the Lord, and what happens? We shed and abide the natural. We shed and abide the natural. I love it when people say, I've been a Christian for 40 years. Well, well, how come you're still living like you're living in the world? 
Where's the transformed body? Where's the transformed man? Why are you still so into self? The Bible says to gain life, you must lose your life. See? If I'm on a self-rescue plan, what am, I, what am I rescuing for? See? It's all going to pass away. Oh, I need to be ready for the future. I need this and this. The world's going to end. I need to buy a bunker and bury it in my backyard. I need to buy a bazooka and a, a tank and a house. Although it would be cool to own a tank. I'd love to have a tank. Nobody's ever going to pull out in front of you. It would just be cool. Yeah, I'm going to go get my tank and I'll meet you down the store. By the way, you don't need to save me a parking lot. I'll make one. See, we get into these emotions and these feelings and these senses and we start believing what the world spirit tells me and we start planning for that when God says that's not my plan I've already called you to come to me and if you come to me I've already got a place prepared for you and it's set and it doesn't require hundreds of thousands of dollars I sat there this morning and you know I I clicked on my, my phone, and there's the news. The Powerball is now over a billion dollars. And you know what your mind does with that? My mind just started going. And the Lord says, you know what's going to happen if you ever win that amount of money? I said, yeah, I'm, I'm going to give it all away. He goes, no, you're not. I said, I'll give most of it away. He goes, yeah, you probably will give a lot of it away. He says, but yeah, in taxes, yeah. I figured a billion dollars only gives me 500 million. Yeah, so, you know. So I went, well, Lord, I could do so much good with it. And he goes, store, this is exactly what I heard, store up your treasures in heaven. And I went, then I guess I won't tell the church to pray for me to win that million dollars so we can do what we need to do. He goes, I got you, I got you. Billion dollars. You, you, can you imagine how many people are taking their investments and going, if I buy all these tickets, because it's like two million to one to win this thing. If I spend two million dollars, that'll give me all the <coughs> percentages in my accord. But what happens if you don't hit that one percent? And you just spent $2 million. <clears throat> and now you're broke. And you don't win. See? It's the way it works sometimes. It's like rolling the dice. You can crap out. <clears throat> Again, we shed. Now, shed in the Hebrew is shed. And, and as I looked that up, it, it meant probably shedding demons or demonic activity in your life. <clears throat> so what do we shed? The demonic things we have given a place in our lives that keep us from honoring God. Now, if you have to go back, you have to go back to the soul trauma thing I did a couple years ago. Because, again, um, when the soul experiences anything, it becomes cracked, shattered, or broken. All right, It's called trauma. And trauma... When a soul becomes traumatized and it breaks and a piece breaks off, again, it, 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 it forms an altar on the opposite side of the broken piece. And when something comes up that the broken piece doesn't like, it flips. And on the altar, this little altar that's there, a demon is perched. And the demon becomes the thing that progressively creates a disturbance in people's lives. Usually, it's in the form of a child. Now, why? Because most trauma that affects us is when we're in our childhood. And I've, again, I've watched this. Crystal and I watched this in my living room. We, 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 were, we were working with a family, and I pushed a button. And the button all of a sudden made the altar flip, and this grown person is in my living room throwing a five-year-old tantrum speaking in a child voice. 
And then all of a sudden, we, we came back, we, we spoke to that child, we brought it back, and all of a sudden, the, 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 the person's other half, because I'm not going to say whether it was a male or a female, other half went, what just happened? I said, that's what soul trauma is. And, and this family was beginning to send that experience to their children through that trauma. And so, again, w the only way to heal soul trauma is to bring that broken part of the soul back to the original core soul, allow it to understand that it's loved and not, and not hated, and get it to be redeemed so that it can receive Christ and come back into the fold of the family. Here's a great illustration. Somebody leaves church. And all of a sudden, they get all so hurt. And it's because, not because anybody said anything to them, it's because they experienced trauma in their childhood, and in that trauma, they heard something, and it ignited that altar. That altar flipped and said, we're out of here. Now, what keeps that person out? That broken soul piece that has experienced trauma. Now, here's the thing. Through understanding and through reception and through repentance, that soul can be fixed. And in it, in it here's the key word, in it coming back, it doesn't lose anything but receives the full blessing of God as it's reunited with the core of the soul. See, that's what it is. The core. It has to be reunited with the core. And so, here's the family of God. Big picture. We've, we, if, you have, if you tell me you've never experienced soul trauma, I'm going to call you a liar. I'm going to call you a liar. Because 99% of the population has experienced soul trauma at some point in time in their lives, probably when they were younger. And so what happens? We, we exit stage left from everything. I mean, I know people that have had soul trauma so bad, they, they will not be around people because they're afraid they're going to get hurt. And so they set up this system within, the, within a system and they protect themselves from being hurt. Even though they've experienced unconditional love and growth in a church. But it became too much. See? And out they go. But this is why it's so important that we as believers understand what that word come means. Because it means we shed what we've taken on in restoration and transformation, and we become what God has called us to be. See? That's why it's so important to under word, understand the word bow. Because we are bombarded by demonic things constantly, day in and day out. As we said Wednesday nights, we live in the world spirit 90% of the time and the Holy Spirit 10% of the time. If we lived in the Holy Spirit 80% of the time or 90% of the time, the world spirit would never have an influence on us. That's why it's so important, I've said this before, come to the Word of God. Come to the Word of God. I know a lot of you have, have times that you've set aside in your days to just read this Word. See? And, and, and you know what? Here's what happens. In, in coming to the word of God, the, the world spirit doesn't have an influence. Now, you're, I mean, you can go on any news channel anywhere, and you can just be bombarded with world spirit bad news. Ugh. The Eeyore syndrome, where you're dragging your knuckles on the ground like a gorilla, and you're going, it's a, it's a blustery day. I wake up and go, Lord, your plan. I'm just going to rejoice in who you are. Let's go. See? That's what I do. See? As, as, as Terry has picked up, light me up. Terry goes, I'm going to steal your prayer. I go, which one? <laughs> he goes, light me up. I go, light me up. Light me up. Because I want to I be a rocket for you. I want to glorify you in every single thing. 
Okay, so, and again, this is, so we shed the demonic things. We have given a place in our lives that keep us from honoring God. This is why the word come is so important. And the fact that we enter into him as he enters into us. And what do we shed? The presence of the demonic activity that keeps us from communing with God. It keeps us from communing with God. Again, God can't commune with sin. So if we have a sin block through demonic influence or through by listening to the world spirit and choosing the world over God, he can't commune with us. It creates a sin block. You know, I, I, I watch these things where people say, well, we're praying for this person, we're praying for that person, and I know the life behind that person, and I go, well, hmm, that's interesting. Who are you praying to? Who are you praying to? Because even the Word of God talks about sin block. I love it. Curtis has his watch set for, what is it? Every, not about every hour? About every hour, uh, Curtis's clock goes off. And what that does is it reminds him to go before the Lord and say, Father, forgive me for whatever I've done and just keep the slate clean. See, I'm, I remember, uh, I can't remember the pastor now, but he did that every, every at, at 9, 12, 3, 6. 9, 12, 3, 6. 9, 12, 3, 6. Always getting clean with God. Always making himself righteous before the Lord because he didn't want anything between him and God. And we need that. And that's why the word of God says, come, 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 come. Enter into me. Enter into my spirit. Let me breathe life upon you. Now in the Greek... The word come is erko, erkomahi, and it means to come. It as well means to enter. It also means arrived and turned. See, I've always said this. A lot of times we will turn this way to God. And the word of God, and even he says, turn back to me. Turn back to me. See, I love it because... God as the Father gave us the Son to save us, but he also gave Jesus to us to remind us that we need to turn back to him. See? That to experience the fullness of God's word, we can't be, we can't be half cocked somewhere doing something else. We have to be fully right here in the, in the light of the word of God. Because in the light of the word of God, we experience absolute blessing. Now, you know, last night, last night's one of those things where, you know, it's like you have a 50-50 chance of having people come. See, and, and you know, we could have just said, eh, you know, we're not going to do this. But I, I go back. Like last night, I'm sitting there, and I'm thinking about the things that transpired over the night. All right. First of all, again, Ziggy and his other daughter came and spent the whole night with us. And so because I know the past of Ziggy and the past of what happened with his, him and his daughter and stuff like that, I'm like going, thank you, Lord. Because, see, the first thing that happens is when I see people get out of their car and walk, I start praying, Lord. Your purpose be done, your will be done, your way be done, and Lord, you get glorified all in the midst of this. See? And then I had another young lady walk up, and she goes, Hi, Pastor Mark, remember me? And my mind's going, Zzzz. And I go, yeah. You're from the, you were here for our last craft fair. She goes, yes. I said, you coming back for this one? I go, she goes, yes. She goes, I'm trying to get crafts done. I said, fantastic. We'd love to have you. She goes, I had so much fun last time. I said, that's awesome. And, and, then, and, then, and then our friend, Sean, who you know, says he's coming to church at some point in time. And, and then it's like, you know, you get to walk. And say, oh, yeah, you know, hey, Sean, come to church. Yeah, yeah, as soon as I'm ready, I'm coming. I said, you better get ready fast. I said, the world's going to hell in a handbasket.
So it's like a crap shot. And then all of a sudden, we see what happens. And, and I'm sitting there saying, Lord, thank you. You know, because you never know what's going to happen. But do we stop trying? Nope. Because what does it say? One soul is worth more than the, every piece of gold in the world. That's a paraphrase. Don't go in the Bible look for that. One soul. So if one person last night, that's why it's so important to do this. Hey, great to see you. So glad you're here. See? That's why it's so important to do that. It's like, it's like, phrase, dad walks up, and I'm, boom. I'm right there. Hey, so glad you could make it. See? Do I care what they're dressed up in? No, I'm not, I don't give a rat's flying fanny about the exterior. It's the interior I'm more worried and concerned with. Because the interior is what goes to heaven. The exterior, nah, it doesn't. You can't impress me with anything on the outside. It's the inside. It's the inside. That's what needs to be saved. <clears throat> it also means in turn. There, there's also this word duete, which is an exclamatory word meaning follow. So come and follow me. There was excitement in Jesus' voice when he said that to those 12 guys hanging out, smelling like fish. Come, follow me. And I'm going to make you into something that's going to be amazing. The best part of that is they didn't even think. They just dropped their nets. And they followed him. They understand the exclamation behind the word, come. Matthew 4.19 says this, come follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. I will make you fishers of men. See, now we have a fisherman in our midst. And you know what? He don't know it yet, but God's going to make him a fisher of men. Because you know what? He's a little rough around the edges. He's kind of one of them guys right there, one of those 12. See? But God... <laughs> Hey, if he can use me, he can use anybody. Honestly. And so God says, come. You know what? He, all of us that have heard that word, come. Receive me. I'm going to do something with your life that's going to blow your mind. It's your choice. And I love the fact that God gives us a choice to do that. And I love Matthew eleven twenty eight, where it says, come to me. And here's another exclamatory come. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened. I'm going to tell you something. There's not a single person in this world today that is not weary and burdened. And I will give you rest. Not the rest we think we're getting when we're, you know, sitting back in a chair having a hot toddy, and uh, watching whatever we watch. This is a different kind of rest. This is a rest that only the Lord can bring. This is a rest that brings you into a sp space of peace. And it's peace that passes all understanding. And then you enter into faith rest where you trust God totally and don't worry about a thing. That's faith rest. Faith rest is one of those things where you go, well, all right, we got $2 in the offering this week. Hallelujah, praise God, we got $2. Lord, you know what we need. If we're trusting you. We're trusting you. And then go to the mail, go to the post office box. Oh. See, that's faith rest. We enter into faith rest because we have the peace that passes all understanding, because we have brought our weariness and burdens to God. You know what? Oil's going to be $6 a gallon. I'm not worried about it. Nope. Trust in God. If I need it, 
He's got to provide it. I'm in rest. I'm in the peace that passes all understanding. I got enough furniture, I can burn it to create heat if I have to. That's why I haven't cleaned out the basement yet. <laughs> I added some more to it so I had more fuel. Faith rest, faith rest. And the peace that passes all understanding. See, I have to come up with a plan somehow. So, so you know, and, and there it is. Okay. Faith rest. If you're, if you're going to jump up and down and be all hurt and twisted and, and take your concentration off of God and, and allow the world spirit to just possess you and take you, those are the demonic, demonic things that keep us away from trusting God. But again, he said, I'd never leave you or forsake you. He fed his people. He always had a place of rest for him. We just have to understand it, and we have to live in that. And then in Matthew 25, 34, where it said, Then the king will say to those to his right, Come here, you beloved, you people whom my father has blessed. Claim your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you from the beginning of creation. See, there's an amazing plan that's been drawn out specifically for each one of us. And that's what it contains. We have an inheritance that God has prepared before the beginning of creation. Come here. You beloved, you people whom my Father has blessed, claim your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you from the beginning of creation. Not the inheritance at the local bank, not the inheritance at the, at, you know, the guys who make money. That's not your inheritance. Your inheritance is in heaven. Yeah, we're good now. I know I have a habit of doing that every now and then. Yeah. Oops. All right, we're back. All right, so, again, this is the inheritance. Where he said, come, you who are blessed. Can you imagine, can you imagine the intensity of the Israelites as they came to Ezra and said, please tell us these things because we want to receive what God has for us. We want to receive these things. Please, every day, meet us here at this time. We'll sit here for six hours and we'll just listen to what God has told you we need to do. Because they understood the blessing. You know, I always, I always look at this and say, why are we so stupid? We've got God's word that shows us this. We, we see what happens when head is inserted in the wrong place, and we see when head is taken out of the wrong place and put in the right place, and they're following God. Why do we keep unfollowing God after we've tasted what he has? Because we haven't entered in as he's entered in us. See, it, it's, it's that street. He enters in and then we enter into his will and way. And so, now come has one more Greek definition. And it is the word katatano. And here, I love this. Because it means this. Come down from your pedestal, your high horse, and meet face to face with God. Look him in the eye. Because most of us, if we had to look him in the eye, we'd blaze up. 
Because remember, it said you can't look God in the face. His brilliance is too bright. Right. Burn our eyeballs out. But here's what we do. We come off of our, our high horse of, do you, now there's another one. Do you know who I am? I'm this person. I'm this. I've gone through this. I, I, this is my background. So what? Come down off your high pedestal because, because you know what comes, you know, pride comes before the fall. So come on down and look face to face into the eyes of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Come. Because you know what's going to happen? When we hear the old shofar horn blowing, and all of a sudden we're going up, and all of a sudden we're standing there, and hi, I'm Jesus. Because how many, how many really believe that we are going to stand before him? See, there's some people that are going, nah, nah, that's never going to happen. Nah, nah, nah. Oh, yeah, it is. His word doesn't lie. There will be an accounting for how and what we've done with what he's given us. And it's going to be. Whew. That's what it's going to be. Face to face. If you think I'm lying, read this thing. It says it. The Bema seat. That's where the Christians go. You give an account. The white throne judgment is where everybody else goes that doesn't know who Christ is. See? So we can say we don't believe this. We don't have to follow the Lord. We don't have to follow his word, his will, or his way. We can make up our own agenda. You let me know how that works out for you. Because I know when I tried it, it didn't work out real well. See? Come down from and meet face to face. Now, the origin of that word is kata, and meaning in accordance to, conforming to, and it means daily. In, every, in other words, every day is a brand new day, and every day we got to walk with the Lord, we got to make that choice. Now, I want to close this series with this verse in Revelations 22 12. <clears throat> Again, see, I am coming soon, and I will bring my reward with me. I will pay back every person, oh, here we go, according to the deeds he has done. Think I'm lying? Right there coming back how many of us are like oh I've done everything God's told me to do are you sure that's not the still small voice in your head because God doesn't speak up here God speaks here and he speaks here and I dare you to go in and take your life and compare it to this You know, it's funny, because I sat down one day before I got it all squared away. And I still don't have it all squared away. But I sat down, and, and I did an assessment of my life according to God's word. And I was like, when I was done, I went, Phew. I said, I, I probably have a piece of silver that's the size of a head of a pin. And I said, Lord, that's quite a reward, huh? And then I answered the question and went, no, that sucks. I got to do what I got to do. I have to live according to his word. I will pay back every person according to the deeds he has done. Come. I will make you. I will train you. I will complete you. I will finish you. Because remember, it's called the finished work. I will finish you. I will work your salvation out in you. 
I will get you to where you need to be so that when I bring you home, you're ready. And you have your treasures and inheritance here in heaven. Now, you know, I'm not saying this because I want everybody to be perfect, because you'll never be perfect until you get to heaven. But there's this word called try. Try. Even though you may fall flat on your face. You know what the Lord does? He says, here, come here. Give me a hand. I'll pick you up. Dust you off. Father, forgive me. I was a pinhead. Yeah, I know. Keep going. Keep going. You know? We're going to get there. I, my grace is more than sufficient. My mercy covers everything. You're going to fail a million times. Look at how many times Peter failed. And God still said, you're mine. But the word, but try, try because you know a guy. See. Now, Dees is ergon and it means test. So, so try fulfilling the task that God has given you, as well as behavior, action, effectual, and results. And watch what happens. The results are amazing. I re I remember. Monica, you back there? I'm going to pick on you a little bit. <laughs> I love it. She just says, all right. My wife gives me the, the three-mile stare with the flame shooting out of her eyeballs. <clears throat> Not really. Crystal's very good about me when I'm up here picking on her and stuff. But I remember Monica coming in. She says, I'm all in this time. And wow, things are happening. See? And that, that's the results. Things are happening. People are noticing a change change in who she is, a change in the way she was to who she is now. See? And, th and that's, that's really what it is. It's trying, just taking that step and trying. See? The task of the things that God appoints to us, they're his good works given to us to perform, to reveal who he is. One more verse, Matthew 5, 16. Did I give you that one, Donna? All right. Matthew 5, 16 says this. You are like that illuminating light. Let your light shine everywhere you go that you may illuminate, illumine creation. So men and women everywhere may see your good actions given to you by God to fulfill. May see creation at its fullest may see your devotion to me and may turn and praise your Father in heaven because of it. There it is. Whosoever may, may come and illuminate light, letting your light shine everywhere you go that you may illume creation so men and women everywhere may see your good actions. You know what draws people to church? The illuminating light of the glory of God revealed through you in the things that you do. That's what brings people to church. Not this. Not that. That doesn't bring people to church. Matter of fact, I, I remember when I was younger, it was Bible thumping time every time I entered into the presence of anybody that was in the church. And I one day said, you know what, that's not going to bring me to church. I said, because I hate being hit. Usually I like to hit back. And I said, it ain't going to work. You know what brought me to church? That one teacher that I, forgive me, Father, that I abused the living creation out of, who prayed for me and cried every day for me, that brought me back to church. Just remembering that that woman was praying and saw, even though it was dim, the illuminating light that I had the potential to be serving God. And that's what you have. But you must come. You must receive. You must enter in. You must understand that there is an inheritance in heaven for you. And that it's amazing. Don't give it up or let it go. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes.
with every head bowed and every eye closed. Again, the first thing to do is, is enter, allow the Lord to enter in by receiving him as your Lord and Savior. Simple prayer. Lord Jesus, forgive me. Because, you know, we don't want anything standing in the way. Lord Jesus, forgive me for living the way I did and for the things I've done and just the thoughts I've had, Lord. Take them from me. That's that demonic thing I was talking to you about. Take those away from me, Father. Bring into me, as you breathe your life into me, Father, enter into my heart. Enter my, into my heart, Father. I'm opening the door for the Holy Spirit to come in and begin to do a work in me. Father, transform me. Transformation is this. I am losing myself. I'm coming off my pedestal. I'm beginning to look eye to eye with the Lord. That's what that is. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. There's no other way to heaven. Your good works don't do it. How much money you put in an offering basket doesn't do it. The only way to get to heaven and ensure that inheritance is through receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Forgive me, Father. Forgive me, Jesus. Enter into my heart. Save me. Transform me. And sanctify me. Which means reveal your plan to me. So that I may begin to walk in your will and way, illuminating my life to reveal who you are. That's what it is. Now, religion teaches us that we, you know, God loves everything about us, including our sin. No, he doesn't. God cannot commune with sin. His word says it creates a block. But when we receive him and he enters in and the Holy Spirit begins to work within you, then the illuminating light begins to shine on the places that need to be given up. Again, Lord Jesus, forgive me. Save me. Transform me. Now, with every head bowed and every eye closed, I've, I've said this, I've said this prayer a hundred times to people. You only have to say it once, only once, and your name goes into a permanent book called the Book of Life, the Lamb's Book of Life, and the Lamb's Book of Life is what Jesus opens up and says, "Hey, welcome." So with every head bowed and every eye closed, if that's your prayer, if you said that prayer, you're receiving Jesus Christ. Remember, you only have to do it once. You never have to do it again. Then just pop your hand real quick up and then just put it back down. You're receiving Jesus. Thank you. Father, we are just absolutely blown away at the unconditional love that you have for us. I want to personally thank you for giving us all the information we need to know and make the choices we need to make. Father, again, thank you for last night. Th I'm thanking you in advance for the bean supper because I know you're going to be glorified in it and that it's going to have an amazing result that creates more building of, of eternity and heaven for you. So, Father, sometimes you just got to use beans. We thank you, Father. We love you and praise you, Lord Jesus, for this time. Father, just, again, illuminate us in the next couple of days because we know that Halloween's coming. And, Father, just use us to illuminate who you are within us. We thank you, love you, and praise you. In your precious name we pray, Father. Amen and amen. You are dismissed.